Namaste to everybody. My greetings, heartfelt greetings for the occasion to everybody and congratulations for something great and brilliant that we are up to today. I am really uh, so happy at, uh, to be speaking at this launch because my many years of experience has shown when women works come together, when women are organized, they bring change, capital C, they change their lives and we do now so. Many things are happening globally and simultaneously in this world today, in, in so many other countries, several countries. So, workers have to organize internationally. You have done it and I congratulate, more, congratulate you most heartily. <coughs> My own journey has been rather long. I first realized about the role and presence of women in the informal sector more than about 50 years ago. Uh, and it's when I was the head of women's wing in the major textile union, textile labor association in Ahmedabad. In 1972, self-employed women's association called SEVA uh, was born in Ahmedabad. In 1972, self-employed women's association was born, let me repeat, out of organizing the informal sector women street vendors, head loaders. The home based workers came to me soon after that. They were women who sewed quilt covers in their homes uh, for a peace rate, daily peace rate sometimes. When we approached the labor department, we were told they are not workers, they are housewives. Uh, their employers <coughs> also told us uh, they are they earn some money for their own spending money for for some uh, their own own little luxuries. Other women's teachers from Shapur area also came to us, and again we found that uh, they were not considered workers. But we knew, we saw them with our own eyes that they worked 8 hours a day in their home to support their families uh, on income and, and still remain poor because they were paid so little. So the first thing was to get them recognized as workers and we call them home based workers. I am proud that the term that we started using mm -hmm. over 40 years ago <coughs> is being used even today and almost it has become an official term. We began to organize the home based workers that was more difficult because they were not used to coming out of their houses. and. And some of them also did not consider even themselves, they even they did not consider themselves as workers. But we succeeded in getting higher rates and then we had them to form a cooperative of their own ultimately. As part of TLA, Textile Labor Association, I was active in the women's swing of the International Labor Federation called ICFTU 
International Confederation of Free Trade Unions. They had arranged a meeting in the ILO where there was a strong interest in women workers and also a good group of women like Krishna Patel and, uh, and Ronak Jahan. Yes, Ronak Jahan from Bangladesh. I presented my experience with home based workers and they got interested and wanted to do a project with us. We started a project in uh, three states of India, uh, women organizing, home based. The person in India who was looking after the project was Andrea Singh. She really understood these somewhat challenging issues and helped us. The project was successful and later I also extended the project into South Asia. From that project was born HomeNet, HomeNet uh, South East Asia, HomeNet South East Asia. Later, more importantly, the ILO magazine World of Work featured home based workers based on the project, our project and their own research and all that officially. The ILO project with SEVA had a legal part and a very good <coughs> Indian lawyer from Bombay, Indira Singh, Indira J. Singh advice that for home based workers you will need a separate labor law. So with her help we drafted a law for home based workers in India. In 1982 I was nominated to the Indian parliament and I uh, and I, I should say yes. I brought this law uh, in as a parliament members, as a private members bill. It did generate some debate in parliament, but the bill never got passed. As usual, parliamentarians did not understand the extent of home based work in India and surrounded all of us. They were not aware of the, of the vulnerability, poverty, pain of the workers uh, that they saw sometimes in their own homes or, or in their own constituencies. However, I am glad to say some of them did get interested in learning more. Meanwhile. At the international level in the ICFTU, I was asked to speak and I spoke about informal sector workers and about home based workers, women. I got a mixed reception, no wonder. Some people were quite angry with me. They said the informal workers will destroy the gains that unions have made so far. One person said, employers take work out of the factories and give it to women at home at low rates. We should ban home based work totally. But others were supportive and felt that trade unions should organize informal sector workers. Good. In particular, it was known that Millions of women are home based workers around the world. So the women in the RCF to you did feel that uh, they should be organized. But there was no conclusion yet. However, a feeling in favor of organizing and protecting home based workers was building up in the international trade union movement that I must say. In 1985, 
Seva became a member of the IUF. The General Secretary Dan Galling was a real revolutionary and he was ready to extend full support to workers wherever they were. He believed in organizing all workers. He said the IUF would support home based workers issues at the international level uh, and he urged us to bring a resolution to the ICFTU general, the general congress to bring to the uh, general congress to begin with. We worked with him on a resolution on home based workers asking unions to support and organize them worldwide and asking ILO to have the, the convention. I talked to friends in some of the European unions in, uh, to support it and then, then Galen asked the German Union DGB to present the resolution in the ICF to you. I was also invited to the ICF to you, but could not be a delegate because at that time Seva was not a member of ICF to you. We had already left the TLA by then. However, I did speak in favor. I did speak in favor of the of the resolution and explain Seva's experience with home based workers. I must also add to the story to tell you in this though reluctantly that through all these Indian trade unions though they were not uh, they were not much supportive. They tried to undermine us they did not want to organize the informal workers. Is it true? I can't believe. And at that time I felt that uh, they did not like that women workers were coming to the fore. Maybe. Of course, now 25 years later, all Indian unions, all Indian Central Unions, Seva is also a central union in India. They are organizing the informal workers and they cooperate well with us. This makes us happy. In the ICFTU General Congress, I came to know that across the world there were others also organi organizing home based workers. Of course, I already knew about Thailand and Philippines with Lucy Lazo and I came to know Jane Tate uh, who, uh, who was organizing in uh, England and, uh, and remember any, any was part of Australian uh, Union organizing home based workers, many embroiders also she organized. And in Latin America, uh, the Brazilian Union had home base workers too. Enek, I remember, uh, who was a Dutch woman, she brought us together in a meeting and we all were excited to meet each other and we all started working towards trying to get ILO to have the convention on homework the convention. But I must say I was a woman in trade unions who really believed in us and I was rather uh, and it was uh, it was their influence and the urging of the supportive group of women inside the ILO through which ILO finally decided to have a discussion on home base workers in discussion. It was the first time that the international labor community 
had even acknowledged the informal workers and to actually have a discussion at such a high level. I was feeling very proud. It was a brief breakthrough for informal workers. Of course, since then, ILO has had many more discussions on informal workers and also a convention on domestic workers also. But ours was the first. I was invited to an expert group at the ILO to prepare for these ILO discussions which was to be held in 1995 and 1996. In that group, we framed the main issues. But one issue I could not convince them was that of the self-employed. As you know, that home-based workers can be self-employed. Uh, uh, or can work for an employer or a contractor for a peace rate. The unions were not interested in self-employed, only in those who had an employer. They did not accept the term home-based workers, which included both. They insisted on the term home worker, which is only those workers who have an employer. So, the final ILO convention is on home workers only. Now, ILC, let me tell about ILC. As I know, the International Labour Conference consists of three kinds of representatives in, uh, in the conference. Representatives of unions and employers who have one vote each and representatives of governments who have two votes, if I am right. All parties vote as a block. The topic of home workers also discussed was also, you know, was discussed in the committee with three sides. The leader of the workers group was from the Dutch trade union FNV, Ike or, or Ik Vandenberg, who was in FNV, great. In order to understand properly about the workers, she sent a team from FNV, Kathleen and Annie, my dear. They sent from, uh, from FNV to Seva and we spent many days taking them to the field and meeting our workers in India. Seva was not entitled to attend the ILC as a delegate again, but ICFTU made us part of their team, they did, and we could go as observers. Again, I felt very bad to be labeled observer. Despite being a regular union and, and unionized membership workers, we were, the, we were also the organizers. We were representing the workers on the agenda. It was we uh, the being discussed, but we were put on the sidelines. However, Ik said, she advised me, we should be part of the discussions and we were quite vocal during the discussions in the workers groups. Some of the unions did not like it and tried to exclude us. There was still a lot of prejudice against the informal sector and therefore on us. The ICFT representative was also very supportive to us. And who was he? He was the young guy rider 
who is today the director general of the ILO. The discussions at ILC were quite dramatic and tense. The employers were totally against having a convention. During that time, worldwide employers were turning formal workers into informal ones through multinationals. They did not want any standards of informal workers and they tried their very best to prevent it. The governments were divided. Some did want to support the informal workers, but others wanted to side with the employer. I well remember the presence of the uh, newly born South Africa and, and their representatives, supporting fully to our cause. At the end of the first discussion in 1995, the committee was to vote on whether or not to have the convention. The labor group voted yes, the employer group voted no, and finally by a small majority the governments voted yes. I remember the employers were very angry and they walked out from most of the discussions. But finally, they, the entire hall shaped the convention. As I remember, the next step was for the whole International Labour Conference to vote for the convention. The employers tried very hard to influence their governments politically and they were successful in many countries. I was also very, very busy lobbying in different countries with my own team. The convention 177 on home work passed in 1996. Hurrah! Unfortunately, it was ratified in new countries, in, in many few countries because the employers waged a campaign in each country against the convention and so far we have reached, right? Now let us look ahead, I say look ahead. What this first ever perhaps International Congress of Women Workers aims to do is to bring peace at home where we live and at home that is our planet and do such and do so with uh, honest and meaningful work. We women workers do not aim to take, take our jobs or take away wealth or, or, or even natural resources nor establish structures or technology that take on life of their own at the cost of well-being of women and workers, no. Dignity of labor, a fundamental concept in Gandhiji's thought, assigns equal value to all work and stresses the importance of a living wage that nurtures both the body and the mind is a core value for us today. That is the message for today. Self-reliance as we know at Seva is tied in with the idea that one's needs must be self-sustaining. Above all is the idea of trusteeship, not only of capital but also of our labor where we share what we need and the rest we are guardians of our future generations. Whether that wealth is man-made or, or earth's bounty, I have no doubt that our women 
and workers, young and all. And our Congress will lead this international initiative for a century to come. I wish Congress to be 100 years old. What started in 1917 as TLA and took turn in 1972 as SEVA is now moving ahead at, interna at international level today with Renana, with your efforts and your team's efforts. As SEVA turns 50 next year, we have to change both the home we work and live in as well as the work that we do at home and on the streets and factories and farms. There is no such thing as cheap labor. We must remember as well as we must be reminding everybody. The real cost of labor is invariably paid one way or another in the farm, in, in the form of farm, factory or at home. <coughs> if not in wages, we pay for it in the form of social unrest or uh, um, infant mortality, poverty, illiteracy, vulnerability or in the form of political turmoil, loss of culture, environmental degradation. <coughs> sorry, environmental degradation or even disasters. In short, well-being can only be achieved with well-paid and protected workers, home-based workers included. The means are as important as the goals, we must remember. To do that, we must change the economy more than it changes us. That is the message. We need an economy of our own making and not one where we struggle in the roles assigned to us. In short, we need an economy of nurturance, I call it economy of nurturance where the full potential of our human hands, heads and hearts is nourished at home as we work. We need an economy that recognizes women's leadership and promotes cooperation, sharing and trust. We need an economy that is diverse, local, sustainable, often home based and in balance with the needs of the people and their directions. Our Women's Congress uh, will move to the change the workers, change the workers world. That is the message. Thank you. To conclude, Renana, thank you and your team. I sincerely thank. And oh, will help whatever I can. You will make the polarized industry and society transform into million blooms. In each home where we work, where we exist, it is us who have found and will follow pathways from growth, growth, growth to nurturance, 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 nurturance of each other and of everybody, every living being on this planet. Mother Earth. As a slogan, our slogan is on organizing. We are all one. Hum sab ek hain, as we say it in Seva. May God bless us 
our unity forever. My love to you all and all our sisters and all our friends, our colleagues on this precious day. Namaste. Thank you.